when uh, every every time I see this particular plan form, we go back many, many, many years ago to two cycle uh, Rotex powered machines and the birth of a really interesting little Stoll series, which of course is growing up rather nicely. Tell us about the 750 and why this gener why this is the the latest in your line. Well, the 750, uh, like you just said, is the latest uh, in, in our line of Stoll aircraft. Uh, the 701 uh, was the original Stoll airplane uh, introduced in 1986, and uh, there are over a thousand of those flying. It has, has really developed a cult following because of its amazing short takeoff and landing capabilities. Now, the 750 came about specifically because of the sport pilot category. Uh, with a higher gross weight and allowance, uh, we decided to develop an airplane specifically for that category rather than just taking the 701 and stretching it a little bit, we decided to really uh, uh, start with a brand new design from the ground up, uh, utilizing uh, all the, the amazing features of the, of the 701, uh, the high lift, uh, slow flight characteristics, but at the same time uh, introducing new manufacturing technology and, uh, and allowances for different power plant choices as well. Now as I understand it, your primary engine for this is the O200? Yes, the, the primary engine we use in the prototype and in the SLSA version uh, on the kit side, we're also extensively using the, the Jabiru series engines uh, as well as uh, the Rotax uh, four-cylinder uh, uh, engines as, as well as Corvair auto conversions and, 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 and on and on. Uh, in the kit realm, we try not to limit ourselves with engine choices. You mentioned changes in manufacturing. What might those be? Uh, primarily using modern uh, CNC equipment. Uh, the 750 is built pretty much on CNC table. Uh, all the skins are cut on the CNC table. All the holes are pre-drilled, and it's match drill technology. And so it really uh, advances the kit assembly, makes things a lot more accurate, a lot easier to build, a lot quicker to build. Now, is the kit version actually an ELSA? Yes and no. It, it can be built as an ELSA, although for, for most builders that limits their choices. The same kit also meets a 51% rule. So we, we recommend and, and we've seen most builders going the amateur build route because that does allow them to use different engine choices and, and gives them more flexibility. And talk a little bit about the kit construction requirements, uh, times, tools, and so forth. Well, our philosophy in developing the kit is that we do anything that requires any special skills or tools we'll do here at the factory or at our factory. Um, so really minimum of tools. All the riveting is using blind pop type rivets, so it's really a, a simple hand tool for that. Um, all the drilling and lining up, most of it has been done already, so a builder really just re-drills the holes, cleats those things together, and does the final riveting. So basically a flat workbench table is all you need to build your own airplane. And, and we're seeing about you know, 350 to 400 hours as a realistic build time on this. Pretty good time for a two-place stole airplane. Well, absolutely. And again, most most folks can do that in their single car uh, garage and, 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 and really with basic hand tools. So it really is a nice kit. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Let's talk about performance. What are you getting out of this particular airframe? Well, this is a type of airplane you really have to fly to appreciate it because, you know, the numbers, it's not a very fast airplane, uh, but at the same time, it's all about stall, short takeoff and landing. With the Continental Low 200, the takeoff uh, 100 feet at gross weight, rate of climb about 1,000 feet per minute, and about a 100 mile an hour airplane. So it, it's not a very fast airplane, but I guess no SLSA airplane or, or light sport is fast by definitions. But uh, it's really developed for off airport operation. We've got a really heavy duty gear, which of course is a bit draggy, but again, it allows uh, the owner and, and pilot to land it virtually anywhere. And uh, again, very good slow flight handling characteristics. We've got a lot of control surfaces, a lot of rudder, a lot of aileron, so it's really designed to fly at low speeds. And it does that extremely well and very safely. Uh, as I recall from other flights and the entire range of the 700 series, controllability was never an issue. Absolutely, but again, it's, it's one of those things that you, you want the control right down to the stall speed, which in this case is right down in the low 30s, so that it really allows the owner to, to use that. Uh, a lot of airplanes may have a low stall speed, but they run out of control below 60 miles an hour, so you have to land it much faster. This is not the case with the 750 or 701 at all. In upsizing the, air, the design over the 701 series, has there been any other design deviations, any other improvements over the norm? 
Um, well, again, we, there are a lot of little changes. Um, one of the big changes we've done in the 750 is in the cabin area. It made it wider and bigger and much more adjustable for today's pilots. So, so we really designed this airplane for the larger guys. And uh, so the, the seats, uh, cabin width with the bubble doors, we've got nearly 50 inches across. And I think that's, that's about as wide as it gets out there. And then uh, the, the seat position is adjustable as well from forward to, to all the way uh, back. One thing uh, we've worked on as well is, is making it easy to get in and out of the airplane. You know, a lot of these LSAs are they're, they're, they're nice sleek airplanes but uh, if you're an older gentleman or, an, or, or his wife are trying to get in and out of these airplanes uh, it's, it's not always a, an easy thing so this airplane being a, being a low-wing airplane and you can just basically sling yourself in and sit right in in the airplane so it just makes that a lot easier and I think that for today's pilots that's an important consideration. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency flexible seating for up to seven advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Let's talk about the SLSA then. Uh... What are the design parameters that it's flying from, from the standpoint of specifications? Um, and of course, the obvious question, how much? Well, as a flyaway SLSA with a brand new uh, Continental O200D engine, uh, we're looking at just under $100,000, uh, $99,000, which in today's marketplace seems to be really quite competitive, and including a relatively simple but modern panel as well with the, with the glass panel. As an SLSA, uh, it, it is a bit more defined than a kit airplane, so it has a certain list of features and, and so forth. Uh, but uh, again, we find it's very competitively priced. Who's, uh, who's your builder or buyer these days? Are you identifying any particular market segment? Uh, not really. Um, you know, we, we find uh, with the Stoll airplane, it, it attracts all, all kinds of people. We get a lot of uh, ex-commercial military uh, pilots that just want to go back to the basics of flying, backyard type flying. We get a lot of ultralight type people that for them this is a step up from flying the lighter ultralights. Uh, so one thing I've learned in the kid industry, it attracts all, all kinds of interesting people. And uh, the, with, this, with the Stoll airplane, uh, it, uh, it, it certainly does, does that as well. And finally, how do you see your company's future in the LSA market? It, it's, it's a different business than it was when it was envisioned. Of course, it's been a turbulent uh, upbringing at various times. The associations either looked down on it or tried to kill it. Now they're all trying to take credit for it. And then, of course, we now have this real interesting dichotomy of Cessna and Piper battling it out for primacy in an industry that in the past nobody thought they'd be involved in. Right. And I, well, I, you know, I, I think it's it's nice to see Cessna and Piper enter finally enter, and, and and quite frankly, I think Cessna and Piper they're still they're still the new kids on the block in in this case because uh, a lot of us have been around a lot longer in this industry than Cessna and Piper have. So, uh, but I, but I think there's certainly a welcome addition um, from my my side of the of the market. You know, our, our background is is in kid aviation, and we we don't plan on changing that necessarily. We just want to make the LSA aircraft, the SLSA aircraft, available to those that don't want to build. But I still see the main market for our company and our products as as being a low cost, entry level uh, airplane that can easily be built uh, at home and, and and flown from there. Sebastian, thank you.